guys, I'm Elian. Welcome to our channel and another episode of Grow With Me. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys another plant haul from two nurseries. We ended up going to two nurseries after picking up our plants curbside from Crystal Star Nursery. Initially we wanted to get some fresh air as a family, uh, maybe go to a beach after Crystal Star Nursery. A lot of the beaches we found were closed and we found two nurseries. One of them was Leslie Gardens Nursery and Greenhouse and the second one was Georgina Garden Center. And in this episode, I'm going to be sharing this plant haul with you guys. We got about nine plants for this trip and, uh, and let's get to it. Our first stop, we got three begonias right away that we're gonna keep outside in our balcony. This one was the Begonia Butter Boom. It was also a Butter Bing. And I was thinking of getting that one, but I, I chose between the two and I thought the butter boom had a more more umph to it. I guess um, it has a, like a brighter red tone to it. The butter bean had like a green and red, but this one had like a bright red tone to the leaves. And we also got two tuberous begonias that I plan to repot and grow out some more. This one is the two, this one is the nonstop white. And this one is the nonstop mocha deep orange. Mark wanted the white one and I wanted the red one, so we got both. So those are just some outdoor plants for us in the summer. This one was our next find, the Philodendron Pink Princess. I had one of these before. I bought from Valley View for about $9.99 for a, a little four inch pot, but I gave that one to my mom. It didn't have as much pink, but this one is showing some, some pink already. So that's why I chose this one, it's a bigger pot. So this one's about a six inch pot. I know it was quite popular in the US last year. Here, I would say Toronto, Canada has quite a lot of them, but the bigger ones are a little bit harder to find. What I love about this is the ruby stemming, and then as it goes out, it has some grayish white tones to the leaves, and course the pink shades to it and underneath also it's beautiful with some paint splash patterns to it. Another pink plant we got was this Syngonium. It says here ar arrowhead red but uh, yeah the, I think this is the Syngonium, pink Syngonium and I Grab this one right away because first of all it was a great price. It was only $7.99. Pink just caught my eye. I also owned one of these before, but it was smaller. So yeah, this is the pink Syngonium. I love how it goes from pink to red, and we have some new little growths down there that are also showing as pink. So a lot of the new growths are gonna be pink. As you all know, Mark and I like the variegated versions of, of plants and we got this Peperomia caparata, variegated Peperomia caparata. This was also at Georgina Garden Center and for $5.99. We also had the purple version of this one, but this was the last, last one that they had for the variegated, uh, for the variegated caparata. It's so cute because it reminds me of Cabbage Patch Kids. It kind of looks like little cabbages. Another one that we got was this cute little plant called Million Hearts. Look at that. Tiny little, little hearts on the stem. This one has been quite popular this year too. I've seen it in a lot of online, online stores. But I had to take this one because Again, another awesome price for about $8.99. We've got our own little million hearts. The eighth plant is this beautiful Begonia escargot. It doesn't say what, what kind of plant this is on the pot, but I believe this is a Begonia escargot. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments if this is a, a different kind of uh, variety of begonia. I've seen this on Instagram on begonia brigade and I definitely fell in love with the 
intricacies of each leaf. I've never seen it up close and it's just amazing to see the uniqueness of the Gonia varieties. This one is just so unique because of the spirals, all of the spiral that the leaf makes and the, the pinkish fur. Be sure to watch closer to the end of the video where I usually take a lot of close-up shots of the plants and maybe there you'll see the purplish tone to the fur on this on the leaves and even on the backs of the leaves it's so pretty it is like an escargot kind of like a snail because of the, the spirals of the shell pattern and last but not least our little mystery plant this guy this was only $8.99 and I know I've seen this somewhere when I checked with the cashier lady she I, I guessed that this was a Dyschidia, Dyschidia, um, whatever you guys want to call it. I know Homestead Brooklyn said there's two ways that people have been calling it and uh, it's up to you guys what you guys want to call it but all I know is this is really a beautiful plant. It has a watermelon sort of pattern on it and uh, at the end of the, at the end of this stem, actually the newer leaves, they have a pinkish tone to it. We're definitely gonna do a lot more research on how to take good care of it. We wanna let this trail some more and make the top fuller. But I feel like it's definitely a good find. Thanks guys for tuning into another episode of Grow With Me and checking out our latest plant haul. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Keep on growing. Our rule of thumb to understand the different types of begonias are by their root structure. You can group them into four categories. The first one is fibrous rooted begonias, which are like your angel wing or dragon wing begonias, or wax begonias and cane begonias. They have a standard root ball with thin roots. Next are tuberous begonias, which have the largest flowers and they're usually planted as annuals every year for containers or in the garden but you can dig them up and store them inside during the winter. They have round tuberous roots, just like a potato. Next are hardy begonias, which are similar to tuberous begonias, but have smaller pink or white flowers and can be grown as perennials, depending on the climate of your region. Then there's the rhizomatous begonias, which apparently has the prettiest foliage and they're mostly used as houseplants. You'll see these roots along the surface of the soil and due to the humidity it requires, these are the ones perfect for a terrarium. Rex begonias are a subcategory of rhizomatous begonias. These ones have fascinating foliage yet less interesting flowers. The Syngonium potophyllum pink can tolerate low light, but for it to maintain its colors and for them to show more vibrant, ample light is required. For our Syngoniums, we wait for the soil to dry out, but not completely, before watering again. For this particular Peperomia caparata, because it's variegated, it's important to give it enough light to maintain its variegation. Like I've mentioned in our previous video, we bottom water our Peperomias, since they are susceptible to root and leaf rot. The Shidia ruscifolia, which is also known as the Million Hearts plant, is an epiphyte that means this plant grows on other plants like trees or tree branches. Like orchids, they grow best in orchid mix or cocoa husk since they use their roots to attach themselves. As for watering, you water it evenly, soaking every part of the pot. Then you want to let the mix dry before the next one. Finally, here we have the Dyschidia ovata, also known as the watermelon Dyschidia. It has similar care as a million hearts and very much hardy, in my opinion, just like Hoyas, as they are cousins to Hoyas. These leaves on this specific Dishidia turns reddish when it is getting, others like the look of it being sun-stressed, but this is a plant telling you that it doesn't need any more direct sun. Again, keep this plant in a chunky, airy mix so it doesn't stay in water for too long and develop root rot. 